Casper, what are you doing? Come on in, Caesar. The water's great. Casper, it's January. It's freezing. Eh, it's great. Come on in. Casper, how can you think about opening the pool in January? Yeah, no time like the present. Hello and welcome to Caesar Snack Sandwich. Today we're on Ethereum taking a look at Ethereum staking. So staking for 2.0 or the beacon chain. Okay, so here we're looking at Lido. Lido is a uh, decentralized version of staking and it has some special features to it. So I'm going to go through it. I, I don't have a flowchart for you because I'm going to use their flowchart and I'm going to try to show you a bit about how to get through this and a few things you can do with it now. Okay, so let's swing over to the main Medium article and talk about what it says in there. So the main Medium article is how Lido works and there's quite a few things in here. You should probably read this. There's a, also a white paper as well and uh, you can find that up here. Primer, which is, it's very similar to this. So if you want to read this instead of the white paper, you can do so. Okay, now going down, 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 down. So what are the goals of Lido? So Lido wants to allow people to get rewards from staking without fully locking in their capital. So what does that mean? If you were to send your 32 ETH to 2.0 right now, it's locked up. It's sitting there doing nothing except gaining the 2.0 interest or 2.0 rewards. Okay, so it wants to eliminate this complete lockdown of your capital. I'll get into that more in the future. So offers flexibility, earn rewards, deposit smaller than 32. Because this is a community pool, you can bring one, two, three, four, however many ether you want, and you can stake with the pool. And when the pool has 32 ETH, they will actually put it into a node on the beacon chain or 2.0. Okay, so next one, reduce the risk of losing stake capital. So there's going to be some insurance. So when the, the validator nodes make some mistakes, you less likely to lose any of your, your staked capital. So um, STETH is the token you'll get and they want to be able to allow this to be used on other protocols currently on ETH 1.0. So it's an ERC20 token that you will get and you can use it to to do other DeFi protocols and other DeFi strategies. So, so it's a decentralized protocol with semi-custodial because you know you are sending your ETH in there, so it's there is some custody, and you know you self-stake and stuff like that. So anyhow, so it's to try to avoid having to use you know by yourself or go to like you know Binance or something and use them to stake. You can do it through this decentralized platform that has a DAO governance. Okay, so let's move down, 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 down. You can read this later. Now, let's go through this flow here. Now, this is basically the staking flow and the setup of input, okay? So you have a user and he puts his ETH in and he gets back ST ETH. So ST ETH staked ETH. So he can use that in other protocols in the future. Now, currently there's not a whole lot of opportunity, but there will be some in the future. And I will talk a little bit about those afterwards. So then we have the node operator, so green and green. So let's talk about this first. This is an actual node operator. It's a person who has some computers or a small company or something who's running a beacon chain node. So validating. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing over there on the beacon chain right now. I guess maybe they're running test transactions and stuff and writing those to the block to the beacon chain blockchain and they have to basically run 24 7 all the time and get everything right in order to to get a good grade and get good rewards okay but they need 32 eth in order to run this okay so they come with their validator and they send it into this eth.1 staking contract so these are linked through some sort of computer language stuff and then we have the node operators 1.8 because we these people will be paid from the the contract as well because they are running the node and they need some sort of compensation but they will be compensation compensated here in uh ETH 1.0 instead of over on the beacon chain so over here let's take a look at this so ETH goes so after you you deposit your ETH into this Lido smart contract it will eventually send it over to the ETH deposit contract so this is a contract on ETH.10 that they've set up to allow you to turn your ETH and stake it into forever into ETH 2.0 and you cannot get back. It's a one-way road here. You can see one way it goes in, it doesn't come back. So that's pretty much it, okay, for the 
input, okay? So here's how the rewards are going to work because nobody's gonna do this for free, right? So they want rewards. So let's take a look at how the rewards work. So now we have the opposite. We have ETH 2.0 at the top here, and this is the validator. So the validator is doing his job on the beacon chain. Now, like I said, I'm not exactly sure what they're doing. They're probably writing test transactions. And if they make any mistakes, they get slashed. If they do a good job, they get reward. Now, so this information is important, right? And especially important to these guys over here who have given their 30 or their ETH and made a 32 pool ETH and staked it with them. So, but these chains are different chains. They cannot talk to each other because they're using a slightly different language and so forth. So it's, they, they need some sort of translator. So they have an Oracle here that's able to decipher what's happening at this node and the rewards that they're supposed to be gaining and so forth and submitting it to the to the ETH 1.0 Lido contract. So this is the same contract we talked about here, okay? So it's gotta tell them about it. Now, when they find out whether or not they got a reward or or slashed, they need to adjust the, the rewards for the people who hold the ST ETH, okay? So I'm gonna slow down a little bit and try to explain this very carefully, okay? So people have ST ETH, right? And if their rewards are a net positive from all the validators that are being used by this contract, then they the smart contract will actually mint a whole bunch of more STETH and give it to the stakers. So 90% will go to the holders of the STETH. So if you have STETH, you immediately get your rewards as long as they are rewards, right? As long as the net is a reward of all the validators, then your STETH balance will increase. So 90% of the rewards goes to the STETH balance holders, the people who are holding this in their wallet. Now, where does the other 10% go? The other 10% comes over to here and half of that 10% is given to the node operators account. So this is what we talked about up here. This is the node operators ETH1 account. So he is also going to get his 10, his half, his 5%, so to speak, right? His 5% of those rewards, those net rewards. Now it's not, you know, it's specific to each node. There would be many nodes connected to this contract for some people. And it's it's kind of complicated. Like this node operator is only gonna get 5% of his rewards, his net rewards, okay? And down here, the Lido treasury is going to get a bit of money as well. Now, why do we need a treasury? Because it's a DAO. Let's go down and figure out why is there a DAO. So they decided to make it a DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization, for several reasons. And here are two important reasons why. First of all, ETH 2.0 staking protocol may change and therefore Lido should be upgradable. So what if something happens here? You know, and the withdrawals in the future are different and they need to change this contract in order to properly interact with this contract, whether it's live and it hasn't, it hasn't, you know, the withdrawals are not ready yet, or maybe withdrawals come and they've changed something and they need to change the contract of these ST ETH tokens so that they can get their ETH out, right? And uh, the other reason, a DAO will be able to help cover the costs of developing and upgrading the protocol. So in order to change things, in order to maintain things, you usually have to pay somebody something to do it, right? It's work, right? So you gotta pay someone. So that's what this treasury is mostly for, in order to pay for these things. Now, what's important for you is if you hold STETH, right? In the future, your STETH balance will equal your ETH Ethereum 2.0 redeemable balance. So if you have 100 ST ETH, when ETH 2.0 is live and withdrawals are available, you will be able to get 100 ETH. So one to one. Now, based because there are rewards, this is why they've decided to do a rebasing. Other contracts do it the other way. And that is you, the one, it's always one to one as based on stake and rewards will come afterwards. So here the rewards are given to you pretty much live. I'm not exactly sure how often it does it. I, I read it somewhere, but I, I remember it was a day, but I can't remember where it was. So you can look into that and find out exactly how often they're going to rebase or adjust the balance of your tokens. Okay, so let's move on and talk a little bit about some other things. So this is a uh, one of the user interfaces for a whole bunch of things about this protocol. 
So here we have voting and it's like governance voting. So right now they're trying to set up oracles and they're having votes on them and you can go inside and check them. But in order to vote for these, you don't use your STETH tokens, rather you use their LDO token. This is their governance token that you can purchase or get and make some choices about things that they want you to vote on. Okay, so you can read through these and check them out. Um, there's the list of oracles, but for some reason it doesn't show anything right now. I guess maybe because there's no data yet, there hasn't been any rewards. They haven't, you know, it hasn't been live long enough for there to be any data here from the Oracle. Here you can see a list of the current node operators. You can do some research on them as well if you like. And these are the ones who applied and got accepted to this Lido DAO. So these guys are accepting Ethereum from Lido DAO in order to stake and start doing verification nodes. Okay, so you can see they have each have their own limits. And you know, this is how many, you know, ETH they're willing to take in. And I don't know why this one has zero, I guess maybe it's either full or actually probably just not allocated yet. Maybe they haven't set up everything yet. Okay, so you can go through this It's kind of like a governance UI, you can click through carefully read things, get some help, ask some questions in the discord and find out more about this. Okay. So over here, this is the stake. This is basically where you're going to turn your ETH into ST ETH. Okay. Now there's some things you need to know. There's a transaction fee of $20. I don't know why this is here, but I assume it will go to the DAO and the DAO will use it for maintenance. Um, there's a staking fee, uh, uh, staking rewards fee of 10%. Now this is what I mentioned already when I talked here. It's just reminding you that this 10% will be taken and given to these two entities. So that's just a reminder of that. So you can stake in here, you can just, you know, I want one ETH and stake it right now. I only have 0.7 ETH and I'm not going to do it this way. So you can consider it and you will get some new ST ETH. You are going to mint some more ST ETH. Okay. Now there are some other options. However, if you don't want to go this way and you don't want to pay this and you want something a little simpler, you can go to Curve Finance. Curve Finance up here, you go to ST ETH and you, there's a pool. You can simply trade your ETH for ST ETH and let's put a number like one. I don't have enough balance, but you'll see, I get a little bit more. Now, I'm not exactly sure why it's a little bit more now, maybe because of, who knows? I don't know why. Maybe because of arbitrage and so forth. Now I, I would assume that it should be one to one, but it's not, you're getting a little bit extra. So maybe take advantage of this before it goes the opposite and you get less than one for one ETH or something along that lines. Now it could also be because of who knows, I don't know why. Okay. So if you do get some ST ETH and you're basically holding on to them, you remember they're going to go up in a balance. Remember your balance of ST ETH is going to increase as long as the rewards are net positive and the validators are not making any mistakes and not getting slashed. So you can expect your ST ETH to increase and that will be interest alone. Now, how much you'd have to come here and watch the oracles and watch the finances and, you know, check and watch it for a while. And then you can see the APYs. And now remember, it's going to be different all the time, right? But another option is a uh, yearn. Yearn rocks currently has a test vault here, the Lido Saint ether vault. Now you can put your, you can put your ST ETH in here. Now it does have some disclaimers here. It's basically telling you, you no know, ST ETH is not uh, going to be completely claimable or redeemable until 2.0, blah, 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 blah. But I would explain that, but you can always just go here and swap it back to ETH if you wanted to. And, but there is one thing you will notice in here that there's a contract. So there's a vault, it's accepting deposits, but there is no strategy yet. So if you do put your ETH in here or your ST ETH, sorry, if you put your ST ETH in here, then your ETH will go in here and your ST ETH will go in here and it'll sit. It's doing nothing right now, but there are no fees right now because it's doing nothing. There's no performance fee for when there's no strategy. So when the strategy comes into play, then they will start moving that ST ETH around and start making some more money on top of the balance increases. So you can also come here and zap in straight from ETH. So you would turn your ETH into ST ETH. So it's going to automatically stake it here and take the ST ETH and put it in the vault and give you back your vault share token. 
Now, I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but they're probably called YVST ETH. Okay, so you'll probably get back one of those tokens or a bunch of those tokens, depending on the ratio of how much you put in. Now, one of the strategies that I heard some rumors about is that they're going to be using ST ETH as collateral to borrow something. And then once they borrow something, they can use that other something to create yield, probably maybe die or something and stick it in the die hard vault or who knows, we'll see what happens. Okay. But basically this vault is waiting for STETH to be able to use, be used as collateral. Okay. Now I guess they could stick it in here, but there's a little chance of impermanent loss here because ETH versus STETH, they are not pegged to the same price. As you can see, the prices are not one to one. Okay. Now, they might get arbitrage and remain one-to-one, -one, but this is something I don't know for sure. So that pretty much covers it. I hope this has been helpful and I hope this is useful. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or you know, hit me up on the channels that I have. Okay, thank you, goodbye. Oh, Casper. Don't worry, Caesar. It's just reward emissions. Hello, thank you so much for watching. And um, if you'd like to support the channel, there are a few ways you can help me out a lot. Number one is I have a Gitcoin grant. This is a pretty unique way to help out. Basically the way this, this system works is if you supply me with any kind of donation, then the protocol itself will also match your donation with like an increasing amount, the more and the more the people donate to me. So for example, if you were to give me one die, the protocol will give me four die, which is great, you know, so your one die can go a long way. So please feel free to come here and check this out. You know, link to this will be in the description. Another way you could support me is by going to Y gift, link in the description. And here, this where this says collect for me, it would say tip. You tip this and uh, you could give me some YUSD if you want. And uh, that would definitely help me out quite a bit. Um, another way you could support me is you could check out my Rarible store and purchase an NFT. Now the best kind of support is just you watching my videos and liking them and subscribing. So if you did that, thanks so much for doing that and uh, goodbye.